Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify 11 recent past exam questions on Chapter 5, Simple Biomechanics. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and visit my channel page for short summary videos, and my resource store by clicking the link in the description for complete revision and teaching materials. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 5.3, levers. As always, you can head down to the description of this video and find links to the relevant short summary videos that contain literally everything you need to know on chapter 5. So if you don't understand a question, head down and watch the relevant video, then come back and attempt it. Draw a second class lever and label the fulcrum, resistance and effort. The key thing when drawing levers, and this is a very common question that you're likely to get in your exam, is determining which of these three components of a lever, the fulcrum, resistance and effort, sits in the middle. And in this case, for a second class lever, resistance is the middle component there. So we've got effort, which usually comes from a muscular contraction on one end, and then the fulcrum, which is usually a joint in the human body on the other end. And let's just have a look at the mark scheme. It says one mark for the position of resistance in the middle, and then one mark if the other two components are correctly positioned and labelled. So you will need to label all of the three components to get that second mark. Okay, question two, topic 5.3, still on levers. Describe an, an example of when a second class lever is used in a named physical activity. So this is a question that asks for a named physical activity, and the, th the first thing we need to do here is decide on that physical activity that we're going to choose. So I've gone for high jump in this instance. The best example of a second class lever in the body is probably at the ankle joint. Okay, so that's why I've gone for something like high jump when we're clearly going to have an action at the ankle joint there. And my example of when it's used is plantar flexion or the pointing down of the toes occurs at the ankle joint when taking off in high jump. So when we take off in high jump, we push off our toes, we move into a plantar flex position, and that is an example of that second class lever at the ankle joint in action. Okay, and the mark scheme here, one mark for an example from an, a named physical activity, and the one that they've provided is taking off from the board in long jump, which is very similar to the example I've provided here. Again, that would be plantar flexion at the ankle joint, and then rising onto the toes in gymnastics. So they're both describing the same movement there. Okay, question number three, topic 5.3 again. Draw a simple diagram of a third class lever. And this is from the second paper now in the May, June 2019 series. So a different paper, but essentially the same question that we answered uh, just a moment ago, but this time for a third class lever. And again, we need to identify the position of the fulcrum, the resistance and the effort. And for the third class lever, again, it doesn't matter if you draw the fulcrum on the left or the right, the resistance on the left or the right. The important thing here is that effort is in the middle, okay, um, and that's all we need to remember essentially to get the three components in the right order. So again, one mark for the position of effort in the middle, and one mark if the other two components are both correctly positioned and labelled. Okay, topic 5.3 again. Describe one example of a third class lever in the body. So this is almost exactly the same questions we just looked at for the second class lever. We had to provide an example. Um, the example here is when kicking a football, flexion occurs at the hip joint. That is an example of a third class lever. If we go back to look at the orientation of these three components, the fulcrum in that example would be the hip joint. Okay, so the ball and jo socket joint at the hip. Then the effort would be coming from those muscles that create flexion at the hip. So the hip flexors and the quadriceps. And then resistance is going to come from the weight of the leg and the uh, resistance that comes from the football as it's kicked. So there was the example when kicking a football, flexion occurs at the hip joint. That is a third class lever in action. We could have also gone for bending the elbow to lift a weight, bicep curl being the most obvious example there, or straightening the leg at the knee when we kick a football. Okay, next question, 5.1 now. State what is meant by each of the following terms, force, mass, and acceleration. Now this is a really easy command word again, so state, very similar to name or identify, so not a lot of detail required here. We simply need to state what is meant by force, so a push or a pulling action applied upon an object. And this is the definition that you will find in the short summary video on topic 5.1. If you want to go and have a look at that one, 
take a look down at the description, the link is there. I've included the units as well, just to show a little bit of extra knowledge, so newtons for force. Then mass, what's the definition of that? It's the amount of matter that an object is comprised of, and in this instance the units are kilograms. And then acceleration, the rate at which speed changes, or the rate at which our speed increases or decreases. And that's in either meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Okay, so this is a really simple question, and you just need to know your, your definitions to answer questions like this. And uh, you can take your time to look at the mark scheme, but it's all been covered here already. So let's move on, topic 5.2 now. The photograph shows an athlete in a jumping event, and this one is long jump. Explain how two named forces act on the athlete during the jumping event for four marks. So let's name our forces first of all. What sort of forces act upon a long jumper? Well, I've gone for muscular force, um, and that's the force produced by the muscles. And I've gone for air resistance as well, which is, of course, the force exerted by the air in the opposite direction to that in which the athlete is moving. So if we're cycling along the road, the air resistance is going to be acting against us in the opposite direction. OK, but the question was, explain how these named forces act on the athlete during the jumping event. So I need to take muscular force and explain how that influences or acts upon the long jumper. So the force produced by the muscles determines the speed of the run up. OK, that's one way in which muscular force is going to act upon their performance. OK, the more muscular force we produce, the greater the speed that we can generate during the run up. So it's just one example from um, long jump that demonstrates the importance of muscular force. And then air resistance, this opposes the motion of the athlete and it increases as the athlete accelerates. So that's another way of explaining how that force impacts the long jumper as they speed up or accelerate during that run up that air resistance is going to increase as well. We could have also, of course, gone for gravity or weight. Um, and the other one was ground reaction force here as well. So the harder the force from the athlete into the ground, the greater the reaction force on the athlete. OK, moving on, topic 5.2 here as well. The diagram shows a sprinter at the start of a race. Identify two forces and explain how each force acts on the sprinter as they start the race. So again, a very similar question to the one that we just looked at, but another scenario here for a sprinter coming out of the starting blocks. So two forces acting upon the sprinter. Um, we've gone for ground reaction force here and gravity, so some different forces from the ones that we looked at in the previous question. So ground reaction force, how does it act on the sprinter? Well, the sprinter applies a muscular force to the blocks. They're going to push down against the blocks. And the equal and opposite ground reaction force that comes from the blocks and acts back against the sprinter in this direction propels them forwards and upwards. Second one is gravity. So how does this influence the sprinter? How does it act upon the sprinter? Well, it pulls them downwards towards the track as they move out of the blocks. So a really simple question, just explaining how some different forces influence the sprinter in different scenarios. And the mark scheme here just confirms that. We've got ground reaction force. We could have gone for air resistance as well. Muscular force um, was another one that we could have talked about there as well. So similar question to the one previous. As you can see already, it's quite likely that we're going to get a question on something like this in your exam. So it's really important to learn the forces that act on performers in different situations. OK, the photograph shows a cyclist travelling at speed in a road race. Explain the effect of three named forces acting on the cyclist. So again, we've got almost the same question coming up for, the, for a third time already. This is paper three from November 2020. This one's worth six marks, so it's three named forces this time. So let's go through this one. And I've gone for muscular force again, air resistance again, and gravity for this one. So muscular force, how does that impact or act on the cyclist? Well, it's applied by the cyclist to the pedals. They obviously produce force in their muscles in their legs predominantly, their hamstrings and glutes, um, and that allows them to accelerate. OK, so when we apply that force to the pedals, we speed up. Air resistance, how does that influence the cyclist? Well, it opposes the motion of the cyclist and slows them down, particularly at higher speeds. And then finally, gravity, this pulls the bicycle towards the ground and keeps it in contact with the road. Let's have a quick look at the mark scheme here. So we could have gone for air resistance, gravity, 
Friction was another one that we didn't look at so far, and then muscular force. So friction, this makes the bike stick to the road. The cyclist may use smooth tyres to reduce the effect of friction, so that's one way in which uh, our knowledge of friction uh, could potentially influence the cyclist. We could also say that the brakes rub against the wheel when applied, um, and that slows down the bike, so that's an example of how friction acts on the cyclist. It's particularly important during braking. Okay, 5.1, state how force can be calculated. And this is a really simple question. You need to know the equation that's used to calculate force. And it is force equals mass times acceleration. And it's always a good idea to include the units if you can. So force is in newtons, mass is in kilograms, and acceleration in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. So how is this one worth two marks? Well, you're going to get one mark for stating two parts of mass or acceleration or multiplying the product of. So what does that mean? Um, essentially, it's two marks for all parts. So if we do, do the whole equation like we have here, it's two marks. But essentially, we're going to get one mark for stating mass or acceleration. And then our other marks going to come for making sure that we've got that multiplication in there as well. So really simply, Make sure you learn the equation, write the whole thing down, and you're going to get two marks for that question. Okay, another draw and label a diagram of a third class lever. So it's the same question again for a third class lever, effort must go in the middle. We won't take too long uh, going over this one, but it's the third time it's come up in the six papers that we're going to focus on today, which again suggests that we really know how we or we, we really no, need to know how to draw diagrams for all three classes of lever. Okay, next question. 5.3. Describe an example of, of a third class lever in the body. This question's already come up again and once for the second class lever. So we can see some real repeats here for biomechanics. And there's not that many questions actually that they asked on, ask on this topic. So the more of uh, these videos that you watch, the more practice you have on these questions, the more comfortable you're going to be when you come to your final exam. A third class lever acts to bend the elbow during the upward phase of a bicep curl. That's my example in the body. So at the elbow during a bicep curl, um, which has been included in the mark scheme here. There's a couple of other examples you could have included, so take a look at that one as well. And that was the final question for today. So that's us done for Chapter 5 on Simple Biomechanics. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you next time for a breakdown of questions on Chapter 6, Health and Wellbeing.